What's up everybody? So today I am putting in the subfloor, which I'm going to use Lou on and uh, wrap the bottom with this uh, vapor barrier so I don't have to paint the wood and it'll be uh, waterproof. Now see all these, these uh, little valleys and canyons or whatever the hell you want to call these, these divots in the floor? That's going to mean that any water that gets under here is going to be able to move around, which is great. And I'm going to leave uh, little openings on the sides. And that'll mean that any water that, that condensates inside is going to be able to flow down and be under here and then eventually evaporate out. Because when I drive this thing, this floor gets hot. All right, so I've got this first piece of Luan in here. And check this out. It sits right up against this uh, wheel well here. But then this is not covered. This is not covered. None of that is covered. And at first, I thought I might just center this thing and then cut out parts for out there and over there. But I think the best way to do this is cut this side out so that it goes all the way up to here and it covers this perfectly and it covers up there perfectly and back here. And then um, just scoot this whole board over and cut another piece for that side. Now as I'm walking on this, it feels very stable. It doesn't, uh, I can't feel it pressing in with those those valleys in there. Okay, so tools needed. Measuring tape, pen, and a straight edge. So I've got this thing lined up perfectly in the back. It's as straight as uh, it's gonna be. And also the front, um, it's kind of hard to tell from right here. So I'm being real careful when I walk on this thing. I'm stepping kind of straight down so I don't shift this thing around. But it's lined up with this thing right here, nice and straight. And that's because I want this line nice and straight. Okay, so back here, I'm gonna set this guy in here. And we're going five and a half inches on this one again. All the way to there. Okay, and <clears throat> all the way to that point. Get this to make sure that this is exactly how I want it and all the measurements are correct and everything. I double measured everything. Everything's great. I even drew these X's to show what parts are going to be cut out and scribbled out the lines that don't, uh, that don't matter. And this line is kind of tried to scribble that one out. I messed that one up a little bit, but yeah. So I double checked, made sure everything's right. I kind of drew out corners just so that this isn't just a, a square. I want this kind of rounded off. So I just, I just left it a little bit there. Um, you're not going to see it. It doesn't, doesn't hurt anything. It's underneath. It's just, I'm kind of a perfectionist. So I want it, I want it right. But, uh, yeah, this looks great. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull this out real quick and cut it out. Let this be a lesson. Don't uh, don't hold your hand under what you're cutting because you could cut your finger off. Ah! Okay, two spots where I messed up. The first one is that this overhangs. So what I did is I marked this point right here because I, I that's where I want it to go in a little bit and that one's already the corner. So what I did is I took a Sharpie and stuck it under there and just traced the whole way. So now I'm gonna pull it out and cut it, but I wanna show you the other area where I messed up real quick. And that is back here. But it's really no big deal because you're not gonna be able to see this spot at all. I don't know how I messed this up, but uh, I definitely did. So, um, yeah, this one's, this this spot's no big deal at all. I kinda wish I would've pulled this out while I was taking, uh, cutting all the other stuff out, but uh, it's no biggie. It'll stay. I'm not pulling the angle grinder out now. So yeah, I'm gonna pull this out and fix that spot and this one's fine. I'm gonna leave that. All right, so once I flip, flipped this little puppy on its back and gave it a gander, uh, this line was like, it was going like this. So it was not right. And the way I was holding the pen was like kinda, like if I'm tracing upside down, it was kinda in. So it's at that angle. So it's not gonna be like on, so it's gonna be in. So I knew that this line was a little too far to the inside. So I cut inside of it and just did a little thin strip and uh, did it nice and straight. 
because that line is straight. So now I'm gonna flip it over and see how it fits. And if I need to, I can trim more, but it was better safe than sorry and cutting on the inside. There are two places where this needs improvement and that is right under here. See how this part sticks up, but this part's low? Well, when I step into this thing, a lot of the times I step right here, just like this. So this needs to be brought up to this level. And guess what? This Luon is just about the perfect height. So this piece that I cut out from right here, um, it sticks over the end a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just trim this down to, to here so that it fits right and just wedge it right under there. And uh, I'm, I don't have wood glue yet, but I'm gonna get some wood glue and just wood glue it in so that it stays put. And then um, the other part is right here. So see how this lines up absolutely perfectly with this, uh, this thing? Well, that means that the next piece that goes right here is not gonna have anything to sit on and it's gonna sit lower. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this back a little bit so that it's exactly in the middle of this so that the piece that goes right here can also sit on that same ridge. Okay, so that ridge is an inch wide. It's exactly an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a half an inch off of this thing because remember, it sits perfectly on the very end. And uh, I want this to be a super, super, super straight line. So I'm gonna use this wood as a guide for my jigsaw and I'm, I'm gonna measure it in a half inch. Boom, there it is. And I don't have proper wood clamps, so I am using these vice grips and a piece of uh, scrap wood on the bottom so that they don't dig into my good Luan here. And I'm just gonna clamp it down, and then I'm gonna re-measure. Okay, we're still exactly at a half inch. Now I'm gonna clamp it down at the other end as well. I'm gonna cut as far as I can, and then I'm gonna do the same process of uh, using the vice grips to clamp this down on the other end because this doesn't go the whole way. Dusk mask, eyewear, earplugs. It'd probably be really smart to wear long pants and boots and gloves, but uh, I'm not worried about it, but I highly rec recommend it. One more quick thing about the jigsaw. Um, because this blade is so thin and straight, when you're using a template, if you're cutting straight down and you move over to the side, it's gonna push that blade to the side and you're not gonna cut straight down. So what I do, is I cut at a slight angle, slightly to the inside, and that'll give my cut a little bit of an angle that'll prevent that blade from pushing off to the side and cutting too wide. Um, I'm perfectly okay with it having a slight angle. Uh, in fact, the next one, when I cut it, I might cut upside down. Wait, is this upside down? No, this is right side up, okay. Next one I cut might cut upside down so that they can kinda go like this a little bit. All right, so that last piece is done. It fits great. I'm probably gonna build a piece for under here just because it's bothering me. It's not really important. You're not gonna see it. It doesn't affect anything, except for the, there is heat coming off the bottom of this from the uh, exhaust pipe and cold at night. But there's gonna be a box going all the way up here and stuff, so whatever. So for this next piece, it's gonna be a little more tricky because I've got this curve back here that I've gotta cut out for, uh, cut out for the wheel well and the gas filler, and then all the way up there, Um, it'll fit under this just fine, but then it gets cut out right here. So I'm gonna have to um, Measure that out and cut for that now because I messed up on that last part back there I'm gonna like quadruple check everything and I think I might cut out a template for this because it is such a weird shape It's not even like round. It's like this weird like eggy ovally thing um, this one, this part will be easy. I'll probably cut out a template for that last curve back there too. Just out of paper, I'll just stick it on here and just keep cutting away and cutting away until I get it exactly how I want it. This is gonna get covered with something too. I think Thinsulate. So the template thing is not working out. It's just a total pain in the ass. So I'm giving up on that. Uh, what I did is I traced out the part for the wheel well. That's the deepest part and that's the easiest one uh, to measure out. And then I also cut out uh, a little bit for the, the back here where it curves in. And what I'm gonna do is just keep putting this thing in and eyeballing it and just kind of figuring out and making it fit piece by piece. And then at the end, when I get it where I want it, then I'll cut the big part off and uh, just stick it in there and it'll be good to go. 
All right, now it's in place. I cut out the uh, the fuel part a little big, but it's okay. You won't see it. It's not really not important. So now I got to figure out how to cut this off. And what I did is I went and marked um, exactly where I want the cut to be on this side and on that side. So I'm gonna find a chalk line and uh, pull this bag boy out and make my line. All right, so I couldn't find what I was looking for, which is basically a string that screws up inside of a or uh, swivels up inside of a container that's filled with chalk so that you can stretch it out on the thing and pull it up and when it drops back down it leaves a nice chalk line. Uh, couldn't find one anywhere so I found something smarter and just stuck the uh, new board under the old one and lined everything up exactly how it's going to be, exactly how it's going to sit perfectly, beautifully and I made sure that this was uh, this piece was right in the center of that uh, little raft or whatever the hell you want to call that thing that sticks up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, that fine point sharpie and I'm going to trace this line and then just cut that uh, the same way that I did it last time with the uh, holding that uh, four by one down to it. So yeah, this is going to be good. All right. I ended up finding out halfway through that uh, free ball in it and not using that guide was actually a lot easier. Um, my cuts aren't perfectly absolutely straight, but they're right in the middle of that thing and that is definitely good enough. Uh, had I had a table saw, uh, it just would have been a lot easier. It's really hard to get straight cuts with that jigsaw. It, it wants to move around. But anyway, this uh, it all fits great. It works. Uh, one place where I did mess up a little bit, just because I was eyeballing the whole thing, is I could have cut this in a little more. Uh, I could have cut this in a little more, but it's really no, uh, no big deal. That's not going to be visible at all. It's not going to affect anything. So, um, yeah, it's okay. But... Had I taken my time a little bit more, I could have made this fit perfectly. I could have made that fit perfectly. And I would have made that fit perfectly. So now my job is to pull these pieces of wood out. All right, so in the next part, I'm going to wrap the underside of these with a plastic underlayment. And that's going to act as a vapor barrier. But I don't want to uh, tear that underlayment when I wrap it around the sides. So I'm taking the sanding block and I'm just edging it off and hitting all the corners and getting it nice and smooth and rounded off so nothing gets cut. So I swept and then I vacuumed out and these little things and all the corners and then I swept again and I realized that there was a little bit of light rust down in some of these, just very light surface rust. So I cleaned that off with a wire brush, wiped it down and uh, vacuumed it again. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my uh, Rust-Oleum paint that, that is anti-rust and goes over uh, light rust and just spray in these real lightly just to cover up. They all have a little bit of bare metal in there and um, this, that is where water is going to pull up. So I'm going to spray those with this real quick and I'm going to go over, okay, this is a spot that I cut out for my uh, fuel pump. My fuel pump's right under there. And then I just took a plastic bag and put it down with sealant and then put tape over it. And I've been sniffing around it, and it definitely worked for sealing out the uh, the paint smell or the gas smell. And then this original thing, this is so Jimmy rigged. I know it's bad. Uh, it just sits on top, and that gives a uh, structural strength so that I'm not stepping through the floor. So I think I'm going to go over this with one more plastic bag, just to triple make sure that this thing is not going to release paint f or fuel fumes into my uh, little environment here. Oh, I almost forgot. And I drilled this hole for the, uh, the uh, battery isolator cable to come through, but I'm actually going to run it through the inside of the van this time because I don't like it being under the vehicle the whole way where uh, it could possibly, uh, the, the casing could get off and then it shorts out or something. So I'm going to bring it through the vehicle. So I need to find something to plug this up with. All right. So I went ahead and painted all those spots and I put another layer, I put a layer, a double layer of the six millimeter uh, plastic vapor barrier over the hole that I cut out for the uh, fuel pump. And then I found a little plastic grommet that fit perfectly over that uh, hole that I drilled out for the uh, zero gauge cable. And then I vacuumed again and then I swept and then I waited a minute and swept again and the reason why I'm going what probably seems like overkill on cleaning this thing out is for two reasons. One, I don't want to breathe in all the sawdust and driving around in this little environment. It'll eventually work its way out of here and I'll breathe it in. I don't want that. And two, sawdust is a great 
great food for mold. And uh, as far as I understand it anyway, so having a ton of sawdust under here and stuff where there's a chance it might get wet under here and take a day or two to dry out, that's a recipe for disaster. So yeah, so I'm gonna lay out this plastic here all the way on the bottom and then lay down the wood and fold it back over. So I very gently press this wood in and as I do that, I make sure there's enough slack on the end so that I do not rip this plastic. It's like I said, I did not paint this so it's, it's susceptible to uh, mold if it does, get, kind of susceptible to mold if it does get wet. It says that it's primed, but I don't know what with. So yeah, I'm gonna see, uh, I'm gonna pull out the bottom. Here, I've got the top overlapping. So I'm gonna pull out the bottom so that the bottom can be nice and tight. Yeah, I'm looking into wireless mics tonight. Oh, God damn it. All right, luckily the camera's okay, but I've got it all in place now. Now all I'm gonna do is walk around the outside and pull it out, make sure that the underside is nice and tight. And uh, I'm pretty confident that I didn't rip anything. I'm not sure, I don't think this piece is gonna make it all the way across. I think I'm gonna have to get another one of these. Uh, I think it was only like 10 bucks or something. So yeah, I'll just have to do that. So in that case, I might cut it so that it just overlaps, maybe a couple inches, and then uh, cut the other one to fit on top of that. So that's pretty much it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, let me know what you think. Check out my other playlist. Uh, make sure that you watch these videos in like back to back in series because there's things that I talk about in the first ones that I'm not going to repeat. So uh, make sure you watch all of them and love yourself. Woo!